part I wanted to pick up on in this is, you know, think about this when we talk about incarnational apologetics, uh, that it sort of begins, of course, obviously with the incarnation of Christ, who fulfills both aspects of Pascal's thinking, right? So at the incarnation, that you know, because it's a Christocentric apologetic, puts Christ at the center, it begins with his incarnation. And then through this Christ, we have knowledge of God and knowledge of our need for God. So that's what Christ did, essentially, is he opened up who is God. He, he's God in the flesh, and he opened up our knowledge about God and that we need God. Uh, and obviously, he sends the Holy Spirit then as, a, as his agent to convict the world of sin, show us the way of righteousness, all those sorts of things. So that's fully in line with where, where he's at, uh, with Pascal's at. But the second aspect of incarnational apologetics is our presence with other people, right? So we right. become Christ to those who cannot see Christ because their world, they've built up, as Schaefer says, those walls and barriers around them. And our job is to sort of ex tear down those walls, put a chink in the armor, so to speak, expose them to the elements, to the realities of the world around them outside of their little, you know, bubble experience that they've created for themselves. So we become Christ uh, Christ's agents to those people. So that's, that's right. our life and our world, words then need to point to uh, to this knowledge of God and the need for Christ as well. So that's for me where that other incarnational side of Pascal's mm -hmm. thing is. So it's not just the incarnation of Christ, it's the incarnation of Christ in us uh, through you know the redeeming work of the Holy Spirit, not in some sort of uh, Richard Rohr kind of way where Christ is all in all the cosmos kind of thing. But in the, uh, right. in the sense of the biblical sense that Christ is in us, uh, we've been united to his cross through his death, through his resurrection, the Holy Spirit dwells in us and lives in us, gives us that idea that we can become the hands and void feet and the voice and the mind of Christ to the world around mm -hmm. us. And so when I was, you know, reading Craig's frame framing of the incarnation or, or uh, Pascal's view I just had a new resonance, you know, just a reminder of one, why I've always liked Pascal, uh, but two, how it really fits in with that incarnational approach that we're, we're trying to propose that is really a healthy uh, apologetic that people can take. So yeah, you, and what do you think of that? A, I, think, I, think that's a, I think that's a great way uh, of saying it. Um, let's, let's take a, a let's do some existential work and take, take a, a page out of the, what's going on today. You know, we just had Juicy Smoulier, Jesse Smollett, uh, you know, uh, tried yeah. and uh, sentenced the other day. What's very interesting about him is that he tried to embody and bear in his own body the sufferings of a particular culture. and wanted Maybe to you should frame for folks who Jesse Smollett is, in case they Jesse haven't Smollett been watching is, the news. Yeah, in case you've been under a rock for the last 100 years. You know, Jesse Smollett was the guy who staged a, a racial hoax crime against himself and tried to blame it on Trump supporters. Yeah. And he was, he literally hired a couple guys who were also uh, black guys as he is a black guy yeah. to fake beat him up. And they, you know, they roughed him up a little bit for real. I mean, but they, you yeah. know, it was, it was but, a but, stage. But yeah, that's, that's, but that's what he found got guilty but, of that. Yeah, yeah. What's interesting about it is that his, he, 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 he wanted to embody within himself this idea that the, LGBTQ and black community has been marginalized, has been defamed mm -hmm. and were without justice, right? And this idea of them being defamed and without justice so animated him that he sought to marginalize and defame others and to bring an injustice on other people. But with this point, for his own glory and for his own self-aggrandizement, right? That's, that's a guy who is an it was an avatar for a particular set of ideas that are that are working in in the community, right? But that's exactly the opposite of what you and I are called to do. You and I are called to to bear within our own self this sufferings that Christ Himself suffered, but not for our own self-aggrandizement, right? Not for our mm -hmm. own glory, but for God's glory. Yeah. And we're to be, as you said, His hand, His hands and feet, such that we are a light for people.